Good day everyone. I'm going to present our study entitled GIS-based Land Capability Assessment and Mapping Scheme, a tool for agroforestry development. This study is part of a bigger project entitled Development of Decision Support System for Enhancing Climate Change Resiliency of Smallholder Upland Farmers in Selected Communities of Calabar Zone, Philippines. The project was funded by the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development or PICARD. The project was implemented by Institute of Agroforestry in partnership with the Institute of Renewable Natural Resources and Department of Forest Products and Paper Science or EPPS, College of Forestry and Natural Resources, UPLB. Here are the objectives of my presentation. Number one is to define what is agroforestry land capability assessment and mapping scheme or outcomes. Number two, explain the significance of land capability mapping in agroforestry farm planning and development. Number three is to discuss the step-by-step -step procedures of conducting GIS-based outcomes. And lastly, to present key results of land capability distribution modeling. Before we get into the details of the methodology that we did in coming up with the GIS-based outcomes, let's define first some key terms that are related to our study. And these terms are land capability and land suitability. Land capability is viewed as the inherent capacity of a land to perform at a given level for a general use. Example is for agroforestry development. While land suitability is a statement of a fitness of a given area for a specific kind of land use and or species. To easily understand the difference between these two terms, let's say we have two pieces of land and they are both capable for agroforestry development. But in terms of the species that are suitable for each capable lands, they may differ primarily because of the unique characteristic of each area. Agroforestry Land Capability Assessment and Mapping Scheme or outcomes is a low-cost and easy-to-learn tool to assess the capability of a farm or farming landscape to agroforestry development. The tool was developed by the Institute of Agroforestry sometime in 1993. This tool determines the most appropriate agroforestry system or practices given the existing site condition, and that is the land capability classes. Alcams is based on the concept of agroforestry as a land use system with the twin objectives of production and conservation. The system with the farmer as the manager is rather artificial but is to be designed according to the situation in the site. This situation in the site means inherent capacity of the environment, manageable resources, and the farmer's objectives and abilities. The procedures were developed with the recognition that Alcam's tool is to be used by the community organizer in order to help or assist the local farmers design their agroforestry system. There is a corresponding land capability of any land use that would have its fit, which means that every piece of land possesses or endowed with certain attributes that determines its capacity as well as limitation for a particular land use. The outcomes model make use of the three significant factors that are listed below. These are slope as an indicator of soil erosion potential of the site, existing vegetation or land use as an indicator of tree, crop, animal adaptation and their level of production, and three, soil fertility as an indicator of production potential and sustainable production level. These three factors are classified based on these different categories. In doing the traditional or the manual method of outcomes, you need first to draw or make individual maps of your site using the different categories that I presented in the previous slide. So for example, in here, you can see the slope, the land use, and the soil fertility map of Barubob watershed. These maps are drawn in transparencies or in tracing paper. So in order to come up with the land capability map, you need to combine these three maps using simple overlay method and get the different combinations of the categories for each factor so that you can make a map like this. As you can see here, there are two land capability class, but all in all, we have four uh, land capability classes using the manual methods of outcomes. The succeeding slides will show you the detailed methodology and how we come up with the GIS-based agroforestry land capability assessment and mapping scheme. 
like what I mentioned to you earlier, the study was conducted in selected upland watershed in five municipalities of Calabar Zone, namely Silang Cavite, Nagkarlan Laguna, Rosario Batangas, Tanay Rizal, and Sariaya Quezon. This is the conceptual framework of our study. This figure shows you that the distribution of capable lands for agroforestry is defined by a number of environmental factors and the optimal combination of these factors are essential in determining capable and uncapable lands. These variables are topographic, climatic, anthropogenic and social, edapic and vegetation related factors. These factors may directly or indirectly affect the distribution of capable lands. Thus, the study emphasizes the interplay forces between environmental variables that affect the overall land capability in a particular locality. Furthermore, the study will also give you the importance of stakeholders management that will facilitate decision making, thus will maximize productivity and attain sustainability. The result of this project will provide practitioners and farm managers with early warning estimates of how different environmental factors particularly climate will affect the land capability distribution in an area. This will serve as a useful baseline information for decision makers and planners in mainstreaming management, land use, and local action plans. Moreover, this will help the farm managers and smallholder upland farmers design and develop a climate-resilient agroforestry farm. Let's now take a look at the different variables that we use in order to come up with the GIS-based outcomes. And these are the anthropogenic variables. Uh, we have three parameters for this variable, which are population density, proximity to road, uh, and proximity to settlement. For the social variables, we have income from farming and social acceptability. For the topographic variables, we have aspect or the direction where the slope is facing, proximity to river, elevation, and slope. For the edapic variables, we have soil fertility and soil type. For the climatic variables, we have temperature and precipitation or rainfall. And lastly, we have vegetation-related variables, which is land cover. As discussed earlier, the practice of agroforestry is site-specific. One single type of agroforestry system may not be appropriate in all farming communities because of the inherent capacity and available resources present in that area. The combination and interaction of the different variables that were presented, such as edapic, topographic, anthropogenic, vegetation-related, and climatic factors, play a significant role in the choice of agroforestry system. The prioritization of the parameters and variables was accomplished using the analytical hierarchy process or AHP. AHP is a participatory method developed by Thomas Saati which is used to provide scores or points to a variable that greatly encourages the participation of different stakeholders. This allows the user to examine the relative weight of the different variables of option against a given variable in a spontaneous manner. The scores are achieved through a pairwise comparison between all the criteria or variables based on the importance and relevance. To provide weights on the degree of importance of each of the sub-indicators of the five major variables, the project team conducted an AHP which was participated by the representative of the local government units and farming communities in the different study sites. Since the five variables differ in each of the study sites, the project team conducted one AHP session per project site. Using a pairwise comparison, the degree of importance of one indicator over the another indicator was determined through the following scale. As you can see here, when the variable is extremely important over other parameter or indicator, the score should be 9. But if the two variables being compared uh, are equally important, the numerical value should be 1. This table shows you the sample result of analytical hierarchy process that was conducted in Sariaya Quezon. As you can see here, precipitation obtained the highest weight while uh, 
population density gained the lowest weight. The land capability modeling process follows the procedural framework that is shown here. The process begins from the preparation of the gathered data using the ArcMap 10.3.1. The 14 parameters undergone several geoprocessing tools and were converted in raster format with uniform resolution and cell size. Then, each parameter were reclassified or ranked based on the proposed classification. The reclassification process changes one value to another in one-to-one -one value change. Afterwards, the 14 parameters were integrated using the weighted overlay, which in this case, the derived weights using AHP were applied. Here are the assumptions and scales, also the data sources that were used in measuring parameters and variables. So like what I mentioned earlier, all the barriers were reclassified and uh, we used the scale of 1 to 3, 3 being the highest and 1 being the lowest. Let's discuss these assumptions one by one. For the household income, the higher the household income, the more likely that the farmers would adopt agroforestry. For social acceptability, if the community or farmers appreciate the value of agroforestry, the more likely that, would, uh, that they would adopt and uh, sustain the technology. For proximity to road and proximity to settlements, the closer the farms to the roads and settlement, the higher the chance of sustaining and maintaining the agroforestry farms. While for population density, the higher the number of households for farming community, the, highest, the higher is the likelihood of farm reduction. For the slope, slopes greater than 50% are not applicable for agroforestry. While slope ranges from 30 to 50% may be conditionally capable, while 18 to 30% are applicable for agroforestry development. For elevation, more types of crops and tree species are suitable to elevation less than 500 meter above sea level. For the aspect, farm facing the northeast to southeast direction have higher chances of better farm productivity. And finally, for proximity to river, the closer the farms to the river system, the more likely that the agroforestry farms would be maintained by the farmers because there is a uh, main source of uh, water. For the soil type, plant growth and development is achieved fully when soil is more loam and clay loam. While for soil fertility, the higher the level of soil fertility, the more likely that the farms would be capable for agroforestry development. For the rainfall, crop growth and development is at its optimum level when rainfall distribution is more than 2,000 mm per month. While for temperature, crop growth and development is at optimum level when the temperature ranges from 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. And finally, for the land cover, brushlands and uh, pasture lands are appropriate for agroforestry, while farm with built up and uh, forested areas are not applicable for agroforestry development. We use the weighted overlay analysis and uh, in doing that, we utilize the raster calculator tool in ArcGIS and we apply the results of AHP in order to come up or determine the land capability distribution map in each site. These are the sample maps of uh, land capability distribution in different sites. The first uh, figure shows you the present uh, land capability distribution map and the second one is the future scenario for uh, agroforestry land capability distribution. So this is for Silang Cavite, this one is for Nagkalan Laguna, this one is for uh, Rosario Batangas, um, Sariaya Quezon and this one is for Tanay Rizal. We check if the future climate will affect the distribution of capable lands for agroforestry development in each site. And of all the sites, only Silang Cavite showed a change in terms of uh, capable lands for agroforestry. The data shows that there is a gain of 103.7 hectares area coverage for highly capable while there is a loss in moderate and low capability classes. The decrease in area coverage is 101.6 hectares and 2.5 hectares respectively. 
For the summary and recommendations, land capability maps can be used in community planning. It can be integrated with the local management plan in the different local government units of the municipalities. Uh, the regular practicum or map validation is desirable in order to enhance the skills of the intended users. And lastly, the outcomes models need further fine-tuning in order to improve its capacity to predict land capability for agroforestry development. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the different uh, institution. First is FICARD for funding the research study. LGUs in the five provinces of Calabarzon for the assistance during the implementation of the project. That's all. Thank you.